Shaka is born in 1787 to Nandi and Senzanga Kona, the chief of the Zulu clan. Despite his noble lineage, Shaka and his mother are exiled, facing hardship and ridicule. As a young man, Shaka joins the Mathethwa military under the leadership of Chief Dingasweo. He proves his mettle and quickly rises through the ranks, developing innovative military strategies. Shaka introduces the Igul, a shorter stabbing spear, illusionizing Zulu combat techniques. He also implements the bullhorn formation, which becomes a hallmark of his military tactics. Following the death of his father, Senzanga Kona, and with the support of Dingasweo, Shaka ascends to the leadership of the Zulu clan. He begins to consolidate power and expand his influence. Shaka embarks on a series of campaigns to unite the various clans under Zulu dominion. His charismatic leadership and military prowess lead to the creation of a powerful and unified Zulu kingdom. One of Shaka's most significant battles is against Swide of the Ndwandwe. At Gakli Hill, Shaka's strategic brilliance shines as he employs the bullhorn formation to secure a decisive victory. Shaka focuses on consolidating his power, implementing administrative reforms, and organizing the Zulu state. He ensures a disciplined, well-trained military and establishes effective governance. Shaka introduces various cultural and social reforms, including the promotion of unity and discipline among his people. He also encourages the celebration of Zulu heritage and traditions. Under Shaka's leadership, the Zulu kingdom continues to expand its territory through a combination of diplomacy and military conquest. The kingdom reaches its zenith, becoming a dominant power in southern Africa. Shaka's later years are marked by increasing paranoia and harsh measures to maintain control. This leads to internal strife and ultimately, betrayal by those closest to him. In 1828, Shaka is assassinated by his half-brothers, Dingan and Malangana, bringing an end to his reign. Despite his death, Shaka's legacy endures in the history and culture of the Zulu people. Following the assassination of Shaka Zulu in 1828, his half-brother Dingan takes over as the new king. The transition is marked by uncertainty and fear among the Zulu people. Dingan quickly moves to consolidate his power, eliminating potential rivals and securing loyalty from key military leaders. He attempts to stabilize the kingdom and gain the support of the people. Dingan faces internal dissent from factions still loyal to Shaka. He implements harsh measures to quash any rebellion and ensure his reign remains uncontested. Tensions rise between the Zulu kingdom and the Vortrekkers, a group of Boer settlers moving into Zulu territory. Dingan attempts diplomacy, but misunderstandings and provocations lead to conflict. In December 1838, the Zulu forces under Dingan engage the Vertrekkers at the Battle of Blood River. Despite their bravery, the Zulus are defeated due to the superior firepower and tactics of the Vortrekkers. Following his defeat, Dingan's rule becomes increasingly unstable. His half-brother Mapand, with the support of the Vortrekkers, challenges Dingan's authority and ultimately defeats him. Mapand ascends to the throne and seeks to restore stability to the Zulu kingdom. He adopts a more diplomatic approach, balancing relations with the Vortrekkers and other neighboring tribes. Mapand implements various reforms to strengthen the Zulu kingdom, focusing on agricultural development, trade, and rebuilding the military. His reign brings a period of relative peace and prosperity. In the late 19th century, the British Empire begins to exert pressure on the Zulu Kingdom, seeking to expand its colonial influence in southern Africa. Mapandi's son, Sechwe, rises to power during this turbulent time. The conflict with the British culminates in the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. Despite initial victories such as the Battle of Isandwanya, the Zulus eventually succumb to the superior British military. The defeat in the Anglo-Zulu War leads to the disintegration of the Zulu Kingdom. Sechwe is captured, and the British divide Zululand into smaller chiefdoms under their control. Despite the fall, the legacy of the Zulu Kingdom and its leaders, especially Shaka, 
endures in the cultural memory of the Zulu people in South Africa. The story ends with reflections on their lasting impact. This long story captures the events following Shaka Zulu's death, detailing the struggles for power, conflicts, and the eventual fall of the Zulu kingdom.